To coin a cliche that is used in many walks of life, size doesn't really matter. I'm looking at a project that has a very busy table with two billions of rows. What is the current scale of number of rows in one table that Oracle is capable to manage? There's a vast difference between capability and whether you can manage it. So let's talk about the capability first. The good thing with the Oracle database, and a lot of other databases don't do this, is we actually very thoroughly document what the limits of the Oracle database are. If you go to the database reference in any version of the Oracle database, in the appendices, you've got the physical and logical database limits, and we've got them all listed out there. Rather than bring up that browser page, which has a table of you know, 150 different items about, you know, what the minimum maximum block size are, min this, max that, et cetera, et cetera. I thought I'd pick just the particular parts that are relevant to this discussion. The maximum number of database files you can have in an Oracle database is, it's about 64K, but let's 65533. The maximum size of any one of those files, if you use a big file table space and you use a 32K block size, which is not supported on all platforms, so this is with, at, with heading out to the boundary lines now, is about 128 terabytes. That's how big a data file can be. The reason that ceiling is there is there is actually a limit to the number of blocks that can actually fit, uh, that are actually allowed in a Oracle data file because we need to be able to address them with the row ID. Therefore, I think it's 4 billion blocks is the maximum number of blocks you can have in the data file. Therefore, the maximum data file size is 128 terabytes with a 32K block size. 128 terabyte files times 65,000 or so data files gives you a maximum size of the Oracle database of 8,000 petabytes. That's not too shabby. In more recent version of the Oracle database, we have the thing called the sharding option. And so the maximum number of shards you can have in a sharded database is 1,000. And each sharded database is a fully fledged database in its own right, which now gives you a maximum data size of about 8,000 or 8 million petabytes, which is 8,000 exabytes. Holding billions of rows is not going to be a problem in terms of capability. The Oracle database can trivially hold that many rows. In fact, it can hold trillions. In the database reference manual I uh, alluded to before, one of, the, one of the lines that says the number of rows in the database simply says unlimited. Obviously, it's capped. I mean, if no matter how small a row is, eventually it must occupy some size. So there's a theoretical maximum that you could fit a rows into 8,000 exabytes, but I don't think anyone's been hitting that soon. So that's capability. Let's talk about whether you could actually manage to do that. So I went out Googling it, and this is pretty much about the biggest hard drives you can buy nowadays. Um, I'm not claiming these hard drives are in any way fast or efficient, but you can get a enterprise Western digital you know, at 20 terabytes now, the Helium. 20 terabytes in a single disk drive is an impressive technological feat in its own right. To get 8,000 exabytes, you would need 419,430 drives. Now, that in itself is a non-trivial undertaking. And then when you go look at the specs for these things, and, and these are you know, green drives, they're meant to be very, very efficient. That many drives, well, your data center needs to be able to accommodate 29, 29 tons of hard drives. That's non-trivial. To drive those things, even though hard drives are very power efficient, they normally only use sort of, you know, maybe 10, 10 or so watts, you're looking at 3.7 megawatts. That's a lot of power you're going to be churning through. And 90% of the power on a hard drive is becomes dissipated as thermal heat. You'd need very little power to actually rotate a cylinder, especially in a helium drive. So assuming about 90% of the dissipation is heat, you're going to generate about, what's that, 13 billion joules of heat that obviously needs to be cooled. You need air conditioning for all that kind of stuff. Maybe 8,000 exabytes isn't probably in your realm anytime soon. Even if somehow you could get all that stuff to work, when you're 400,000 drives, the mean time between failure is about 2.5 million hours per drive, which means once you cross that line, given that you've got 400,000 drives, you're probably going to be replacing one of those drives every six hours. So you better have a pretty good fleet of staff ready to do hot patching as, as you go. This isn't meant to, to ridicule the question. This is simply to point out that the scale of what the Oracle database can do is literally insane. So the database is capable of having vastly more than billions of rows. However, 
manage that, that infrastructure, the ability to actually have servers that actually will hold that volume of data is a different challenge. And you can go out Googling for you know, the way that companies such as Facebook and Google, et cetera, manage scale of that size. And it's never about the technology. It's always about the hardware. You know, all the stuff you see about Google's innovations is often about, you know, the cooling, the power, the, the, the shipping containers full of disk drives and computers. It's generally an infrastructure challenge as opposed to a database challenge. That's why I always chuckle when people say, oh, yes, yeah, I've got a table with 10 million rows, therefore I'm going to have to stop using a relational database. I'm going to have to use some other special NoSQL thing because of the size. The database is more than capable of insane levels. Having said that, just to reassure our original customer, billions is fairly common nowadays, but it still requires thought. The best way is to reach out to others, either reach out to Oracle, reach out to me, reach out to people in your local user group to actually speak to them about what the challenges they face, how they manage it, etc. To coin a cliche that is used in many walks of life, size doesn't really matter. I once worked with a customer where their database was less than two gigabytes in size, maybe even less than a gigabyte. And it was one of the most challenging databases I ever had to look after because their whole query uh, infrastructure was about controlling transactions based on arbitrary locking mechanisms. So it might be, I'm allowed to create a sales transaction as long as this row exists in this table, but this value of this row in this table doesn't equal this and other things. And, they, and those rules weren't defined in code, they were defined by the customers themselves. So they would actually put in metadata, you know, that you couldn't have a sales invoice unless uh, you were this kind of customer, you had this kind of discount, this kind of promotional code, et cetera, et cetera. So we had to invent locking mechanisms for the read consistency model of Oracle to manage the allowance of sales transactions. Hugely complicated locking mechanisms, hugely complicated coding, hugely complicated management of the data. It was a two gigabyte database. So size doesn't matter when it comes to building successful applications. It's always about complexity. But hopefully that reassures our customer who's worried about billions of rows that the Oracle database is definitely going to be fit for purpose. <laughs>